So this is my 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro driven desk setup, or at least it was up until a few days ago when I switched completely to the new Mac Pro. But I did want to show you how I was using my 16 inch MacBook Pro docked and some of the accessories that I really liked using with it. If you wanna see an updated version of my desk setup that's featuring the new Mac Pro that we just got, drop a like on this video and let me know in the comment section down below. As I said earlier, the 2019 16 inch MacBook Pro is the main staple of this setup, but it's not a desk setup without, well, a desk and chair. Luckily for this setup, the chair is optional as this is a sit stand desk from the folks over at Autonomous. Now this video isn't sponsored or anything by them, but some companies did send out a few things for me to try out, and Autonomous was nice enough to send out their new desk. This Autonomous desk is super fast when going up and down, and it was really easy to put together, and it has four different programmable heights, but I really only use two. One height for sitting, and of course one for standing. But yeah, it's quick and really quiet when switching modes, and the white tabletop, in my opinion, is really high quality. It even has some slots to run the cables through in order to give some sort of cable management. But uh, yeah, I did none of that to this desk setup whatsoever. So my apologies if you see any of the poor cables that are lying around and I'll try to shoot around it the best I can. Even though this desk is meant to be used in both sitting or standing, let's be real, most of the time I'm sitting and so a good chair is very important. And as much as I really should have invested in a Herman Miller chair in the past, I'm glad I didn't because there are other great options out there as I found out by using the Kin chair from Autonomous for the last few months. This chair actually kind of looks like the Herman Miller chair that I was originally checking out and I'm super happy with this chair not only because of the huge price difference but because it's really comfortable. It's extremely ergonomical and the support on my back is incredible. It's obviously height adjustable, but also the armrests can go up and down or they can slide from left to right, really giving you the ability to get specific with how you want your chair to be set up and how it fits with your body. You unfortunately can't adjust the lumbar support, but I don't really think you need to. It fits my back perfectly and hopefully it does the same with other people who use this, but I'm assuming it'll be good for most people. And I love the rubber materials that it's made out of and the holes that kind of drive the design makes it really breathable so it doesn't get too hot. The current $349 price tag is also a huge plus considering that other chairs like this with this amount of quality put into it like a Herman Miller can be well over a thousand dollars. So moving on to the monitor for this setup, it is a 32 inch 4K Samsung space monitor. And from a monitor standpoint, it's okay. It's not the sharpest thing in the world and not being Thunderbolt 3 compatible is a bit of a bummer, but I'm able to find a solution for that that I'll show you in just a second. But the appeal of this monitor is really in the name. This space saving design is actually really awesome. The monitor basically clamps to your desk and then you can push it flat up against the wall if you want to or you can tilt it all the way down so that the bottom of the monitor is touching the top of your desk. Kind of like a Surface Studio. I really wanted a clean looking monitor setup that gave me a lot of space and flexibility and the Samsung Space Monitor really does a fantastic job. But again, the quality of the panel itself is average at best. Also, there are no Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports at all on the back thus making it really hard to have that one cable experience without a dock. So we might as well get into my solution for that right now. Now there are plenty of USB-C docks and hubs out there that can help you achieve this. And you really don't need to get this specific dock if you don't want to, but this is just what I'm using to get that one cable integration for your MacBook Pro. And so the dock that I went with is the Glyph Thunderbolt 3 NVMe dock that actually has a one terabyte SSD integrated directly inside of it. The front of the dock has a couple of 3.5 millimeter ports, a USB-C and USB-A port, and an SD card slot. Perfect for video editors out there who need to plug in their SD cards quickly and easily. And then on the back of the dock, it actually has a few more Thunderbolt 3 ports to help charge and output an external display, as well as a display port and ethernet port. Now, of course, you can pick up the dock without the SSD and add your own in later, which will actually probably save you a lot more cash in the long run, but the included SSD is extremely fast and convenient. 
For mass storage, I'm actually using the Lacy Too Big Thunderbolt 3 dock that also has a CF and SD card slot on the front, as well as a USB Type A port. And then on the back, there are two Thunderbolt 3 ports and one USB C 3.1 port. But the biggest appeal for me is the 20 terabyte RAID system that it's capable of housing. I have 20 terabytes of storage space available to store all of my raw footage and larger files and then either use my internal SSD on my MacBook or the NVMe SSD from the previously mentioned dock to edit off of. I know these are hard disks and so they're not as fast as an SSD, but the Thunderbolt 3 connection is actually really fast to transfer over gigs and gigs of footage to the drive. So I highly recommend checking it out if you want a lot of hard drive space for cheap. So that dock was located on light number one, which is actually a weird light shelf thing that I picked up from Target somewhere. I'll try to leave a link to a similar product that maybe you can get easily on Amazon if I can't find the Target one. But on the other side, on the other light with that shelf, it houses my Blue Yeti X microphone, which is actually the microphone that I'm using right now to record the voiceover for this entire video. It's the perfect microphone for YouTube voiceovers, podcasters, and gamers who are streaming and looking for a cost-effective microphone to get the job done. The Yeti X features a four capsule array that can deliver some fantastic clarity and the multifunction smart knob that helps me adjust the gain, headphone, and mic gain quickly is a nice touch. It connects via USB, so that's super easy and it's really lightweight. I also recommend getting some sort of pop filter solution or your voiceover might have a few pops in it, but for $169, there aren't many other microphones out there at this price that can beat the Blue Yeti X. It even comes with software to help you take your voiceover game to a whole other level. I highly recommend checking it out. To play back my audio, I use these awesome small speakers from Audio Engine. These are the Audio Engine HD3s, and they are a 60 watt Bluetooth set of speakers with a built in 24 bit DAC, and they pack a really powerful sound. Just a heads up, these are also kind of a few years old, but that shouldn't really matter because they're really good and I don't really need another pair of desktop speakers right now because these have worked out so well for me. They are the perfect size for my setup, they're plenty loud and they look really nice too. They are also pretty well priced at $349. So whether you want to use them as Bluetooth speakers or you decide to plug them in via USB, RCA or 3.5 millimeter inputs, these versatile speakers can definitely get the job done. As far as peripherals go, I'm using the MX Keys keyboard and the MX Master 3. The MX series from Logitech is pretty much a YouTuber staple, so I'm trying to find other options out there, but there's really not a whole lot of options that are as good as the MX series. They fit my setup perfectly and it's really hard to pass up because these products are just so well made. The MX Keys is extremely nice to type on, the keys feel perfect with just the right amount of travel and can be paired to three different devices at one time. The MX Master 3 mouse couples perfectly with its ergonomic design and has a plus plethora of customizable buttons that can help you speed up your workflow. My peripherals sit on this desk pad from Satechi, which is leather and awesome. It's the perfect size and it really complements the setup well in my opinion. Honorable mention here, Satechi also makes a Bluetooth keyboard that I've been using right before I got the MX keys. It looks a lot like Apple's Magic Keyboard, but when you type on it, it has a bit more key travel. It's actually pretty loud. Not mechanical loud, but it's pretty close and that's kind of what I love about it. I love the look and feel of this keyboard and I actually use it on my other setup that's actually behind me right now. So maybe I'll do an entire office tour showing off all the other things that I use on each different desk setup, as well as all of the camera gear and stuff that I use to make videos. So if you want to see that video, go ahead and drop a comment letting me know. The rest of the desk is littered with a few other desk essentials like a fake Ikea plant and this Pixar looking light from Tommins. I also use this giant ember ceramic mug because the regular mug only holds like eight to 10 ounces of coffee, which wasn't really enough for some of the single cup coffee makers that I use. And this 14 ounce version of the ember mug is awesome. So that's it. That was my setup for late 2019 and it's already changed at the time of me recording this video. So if you wanna see the new desk setup at the start of the new year, be sure to like and comment and of course subscribe so you don't miss that video. Thanks so much for watching everyone and I hope to see you guys around in the comment section in the next video.